Ladies and gentlemen, today we witnessed one of the greatest runs in any competitive sport of all time. Magnus Carlsen, considered by many the greatest chess player ever, playing a tournament in Croatia where he was up against nine other opponents in one day, like a Bruce Lee movie. And Magnus Carlsen defeated every single opponent. No draws, no losses, 9-0, a 4,000-plus ELO performance. He was perfect. He was sensational. And I'm going to show you all of his games. Now, if you're a longtime viewer of my channel, you know right now, July 8th, 2023, I'm back. I'm back home. I was on vacation for uh, two weeks uh, or kidnapped or held by the, you know, the hostage takers. And they let me free, but only if I made this video. Oh my goodness, my friends, you just just put me up on the smart TV, watch me on the iPad, put me on a little ledge in the in the shower, you know, and just tune in because this was this was incredible. It's Magnus Carlsen. He's gonna win every game in this video. He's going to do it in a, in a million different ways or nine different ways. Here we go. This was the blitz portion of the Zagreb uh, Rapid and Blitz tournament. Magnus with the black pieces first game. His opponent Fabiano Caruana. It's a queen's gambit, e6 played by Magnus, he plays d takes c4, and the players get started with a very sharp and complicated queen's gambit, accepted, declined kind of a thing where Magnus is like, you can't have my pawn. Uh, a massive explosion, takes, takes, knight c3, and the bishop drops back to b7, and it's a very tense position early as Fabiano and Magnus have evened out the pawns, but they're very, very imbalanced. Uh, and this game was very tense for a while. There was a knight trade in the center of the board. A little bit later, they traded the dark squared bishops, and the position is dead equal. So, Magnus brings his queen out, puts his rook into the center, plays king f8, which if you want me to explain to any intermediate or beginner player, I absolutely can't. Puts his rook in the center, and I mean, it's a whole bunch of nothing, right? It's just queens, Magnus plays a5, rooks, bishops, knights. A lot of pieces are just slowly getting traded off the board. It's rook, knight. And queen versus rook, knight, and queen. How is Magnus going to win this? Puts his rook on the center line. Queen and rook are very active. He's pushing Fabiano backwards. Grabs a pawn on b2, but loses the one on c7. King goes back to g8. All right? Magnus has won a pawn. Five seconds versus nine seconds. What if I told you that these guys played 70 more moves with less than 10 seconds on the clock? Well, I should probably match the pace. We got a knight trade. Queen and rook, queen and rook. Four pawns versus three. This is not winnable by any human. It's not winnable, but Magnus ain't human. He's a robot, and he slowly, methodically pries apart the defense of the white position, activating his king, activating his pawns, a slow, methodical effort forward. It's still a draw, but you gotta be perfect. You gotta be perfect when you defend against Magnus. Queen endgame looking like a draw, dancing, dancing, pushing the pawn, pushing the king, and at some point, deep into this endgame, it was just a matter of time before Fabiano Caruana would succumb to the bothersome approach that Magnus took. The position doesn't look any different, and yet it's winning. And it took 104 moves for Magnus to grab two pawns and win the game. 104 moves is how we started the day. Now, the good news is not all of these games are 104 moves, although I wouldn't mind the ad revenue. Game number two, all right? This time, Magnus is playing against the Polish phenom and the Polish phenom is Jan Krzysztof Duda. We have a Catalan with pawn to g3. D takes c4 on the board, and Magnus plays this approach with bishop e3, which is just whatever, edgy stuff. Queen c1 is gonna win the pawn back, and Magnus does it like this. He is playing a Catalan gambit. A Catalan gambit is when you give up the pawn on c4. You will notice that white has uh, six pawns, and also, uh, and black has seven. So black is a pawn up, but white has a very pleasant position. Oh, I forgot to ask. Do you prefer my microphone settings like this on my normal setup? Uh, or would you prefer I uh, recorded uh, with the setup of the vacation, which sounded a little bit more rich, but also, I don't know, a little bit much. Anyway, Magnus trades bishops and uh, puts his knights in the center of the board like this. Knight e4. And now what? How is Magnus going to win the second game of the day? h4. But still rock solid. A lot of pawns on dark squares. He could go to c5. He could go that way, right? Is he going to start an attack? Well, he drops the knight back to c4, and now he does this. He's got his pawns in the center. He's allowing Duda to come in here, but he's, he's also going to fire back. 
He trades knights. And Duda actually loses the exchange, but his idea is to push these pawns. The Magnus goes rook a4. And queen d1. And h5. And queen a1. And he's just not letting these pawns go forward. You know what's going to happen if those pawns don't get to go forward? Duda's not going to know what to do. So he tries to attack Magnus as king. Magnus is like, no, 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 no. Yeah, you can come in with the pawn. I got news for you. The pawn stopped. Yeah, you could try to counterattack. I got news for you. You ain't counterattacking nothing because you thought you were attacking me, but I'm attacking you. Rook d1 check. F3. Cool, calm, and collected. Walks out of the position and jumps right back. Knight e6 is looking good, but here comes c5. Duda has to find queen b5. Only move he finds the wrong move. Now queen b3. Rook c4, knight c5, and unfortunately, check, king h2, Magnus wins the knight, Magnus wins the game. A very complicated, back and forth, messy little Catalan, 2-0. Third game of the day, Magnus is playing Gukesh, Indian superstar. Magnus goes for the Sicilian defense. He goes for the Taiman of Sicilian. Bishop e3, Magnus plays a6, g4. Super aggressive move completely designed against knight f6 because then you would go g5. So g4 is just kind of trying to fire a couple of warning shots over here. Magnus is like, all right, you want to attack over there? Come, come on. Let's go. H4. Yeah, yeah, You think I'm going to castle that way, right? Maybe. But I don't think so. It's very clear, so I'm going to counterattack you over here. Queen d2. Magnus is like, yeah, you, you want to you wanna, you wanna fight? B4. I just need a queen and pawns. I don't need my knight. My bishops, children are watching. And none of this matters to me. B4. Knight e2. Magnus just takes. I mean, this position looks completely ridiculous. Magnus has only moved the queen. White is completely castled. White has moved every piece. Here comes g5. Magnus is waving the red flag in front of the bull. Hg. The knight goes to e4. The queen centralizes. Look at Gukesh's position. It's firing on all cylinders. Queen, bishops, knight, rooks, me extremely jet lagged and recording a video just 90 minutes after landing from a seven and a half hour flight. You know, we're all champions in our own way. Knight to d6, queen takes b4. And right here, I gotta tell you, this ain't looking too good for black. He's got like no development, right? Now you're probably going, Levy, it says minus 0.5 right there. You're not fooling anybody. You're not stockfish. But you know who is stockfish? Or as damn close as possible to Stockfish as we're going to get from a human. Queen c6. It's endgame time. That's all he needs. That's all he needs. Rook c6. And now allow the pieces to do the dancing. Rook slides back. Rook h4. What a move. His king and bishop still haven't even moved yet. You might wonder why he didn't take the knight. It's because the rook was hanging. The bishop got taken. Magus didn't even move his bishop. He didn't move his bishop. 27 moves. And the bishop perishes. And now it's rooks and bishop versus rooks and knight. Rook e4, d5. And all he needs is a tiny bit of imbalance in the endgame. The rooks, the knight, gliding together, asking questions of the white position. Rock solid, beautiful coordination. It's time for a rook endgame. He just needs a little bit. He just needs a little bit. Rook f3, he grabs the pawn, pushes, and he just creates practical chances. Rook c2! He trades the rooks because he's going to win this pawn, and the game is over. White's only chance of survival was to lose the pawn here, but it doesn't matter. King d3, 2 versus 1. This is trivial for the champ, and that's it. If you go here, it makes no difference. I can play f5, and it's game over. I can play f6. This is a winning king and pawn endgame. 3 and 0. In a variety of different ways. Now, he's playing the Croatian phenom, Ivan Šaric. All right? And he plays bishop c4. This man, Magnus, is playing the Bowler? Bowder? I don't, I don't know what it's called. Bowder or something like that. This is what beginners play. Admit it. You are no different than Magnus Carlsen, the greatest chess player of all time. What was the first opening you learned? Italian with these three moves. So what did you go and do? Played it against every other opening in existence. Sicilian, Italian. I mean, kind of. French, Italian. Any opening, Italian. This is not supposed to be any good because black can play e6. So what does black do in a little while? He plays e6. Magnus is like, I don't care. We just have to play a game now. 
I'm not interested in opening preparation. Now the center is going to open up, all right? And we have a symmetrical position, no C pawns. Magnus rotating the knight around, poking a little bit with the bishop. Gives away the bishop for the knight and puts his knight on g3, and now the center locks. The center is locked. What does that mean when the octagon door shuts in the UFC? Two men, two women have a fist fight. Okay, that's what's going to happen in this game. Cage closed, center locked, two men are going to have a fist fight, except they're dorks, so they're going to play on the chessboard. I'm also a dork. We're all dorks. You watching this, you're a dork as well. All right? I'm just like, there's nothing wrong with that. I was made fun of for chess in school. Now you're like weird if you don't play chess in middle school. So dorks are the ones that succeed in the world. Knight takes e5. The knights gallop into the black position. d6 on the way. The crossroads have opened up. An explosion in the town square. He grabs the pawn on e5. He threatens mate, induces a weakness. Queen h4 hits the knight immediately. Knight d6 hits everything. And now just to calm h3, just make sure the king doesn't get mated. Queen b4, rook d1, centralizing, kicks out the queen from the position, hits the queen again, grabs, and now bishop takes f7, and the black position is going to disintegrate. But it's going to disintegrate into an endgame that Magnus is going to win. He's threatening to infiltrate with his rook and queen. The pawn is on the way as well, and it's just a matter of time before Sharic. I think in this position... By the way, Magnus hung a fork with three seconds on the clock. <laughs> but uh, low time, we're just going to conveniently skip that. And in, in time scrambles, anything is possible. And he gets it done. He gets it done. It wasn't smooth, but he gets it done. Most important is his face is smooth with a clean shave. He wins another game. Next game. 4-0. He's playing Vichy Anand with the black pieces. Vichy begins e4 this time. My man. My man go. Oh, keep playing the caro. I'll always love me when Magnus Carlsen plays my favorite opening. It's like when your favorite artist goes to your favorite city, but he charges like $700 for tickets so you can't afford it or crashes a ticket website. D3. Um, ah. Oh my God. Oh my God. I'm so tired. Like, halfway through recording this video, I'm like, I can't even believe I'm speaking right now. But I have to stay up late. It's like afternoon here in New York, and if I sleep, it's going to ruin everything. So I got to stay up until like 9, 10 p.m., then I'm going to crash. Jet lag. Heck. Anyway, Magnus trades queens. Uh, and then he develops his knight, and then he plays this move g5. Now, by the way, uh, white undeveloping the knight to block the bishop and his knight to guard the pawn might look really silly. It, it's one of the top computer moves here. This is the kind of like the meta theory here. I'm not going to explain it because you don't need to know it because this is like chefs sprinkling like it's like those restaurants. You ever seen those Michelin star restaurants that like deconstruct meals and put them on a plate like individual ingredients? I'll never understand that. You'll never understand that. But it's one of these things. G5, G, like, uh, like what is what even is this? I mean, it looks like 400s are playing, right? OK, here come the pieces. And Magnus grabs the two bishops and develops his pieces and rotates the knight and plays f5 all right equal position so what's next castles right trades the knight bishop's looking very nice rook d8 hitting the pawn in the center and vichy decides to take the pawn lose this pawn centralizes knight here comes magnus dancing away to the other side of the board rook hits the pawn king comes closer a little bit rook a2 check and again like nothing special it's kind of an equal game he's won four but how is he going to win the fifth he attacks the rook, rook takes, I mean, it's a completely equal position. And then Vichy goes here. Vichy needed to make sure his king was never going to get mated. When he wandered over here with the rook, suddenly the move bishop d4 came. And it disconnected the bishop and the rook and the bishop from that square. So if you take, I'm actually not going here, it's mate. So Vichy needed to play bishop a7. He played rook a7. And suddenly, he's lost. One mover, boom, headshot. The pawns are coming down the board. Mate is threatened on both sides. Five and oh. Variety of ways. One punch knockout. End game grind. Coin flip. 104 move grind. Five and oh. Next, 
his former world championship challenger. Well, actually, the last one, right? Because Magnus didn't defend again. Another Catalan. What are we going to get this time? This time we get knight c3. Magnus plays for the center. Rook b8. Jan is like, you can't have the pawn. You took, you, you gave me the pawn. I'm not giving the pawn back. I'm not giving the pawn back. I'm not giving it back. Okay. Rook d1. Puts the knight back. Kicks out the knight back to uh, over there. And now Jan gives up the pawn on b5. But here comes the bishop. Magnus voluntarily giving up another pawn. Knight c2. And here he comes. The worst opening that you can allow Magnus to play is the Catalan. You can't really stop the Catalan, but once you get Magnus in the flow state of the Catalan, it's a wrap. D5. And E5. Now everything is opened up. The bishop, the rook, knight E4. Take, take. He doesn't take the pawn. Knight goes to D4, hitting the rook. You can play rook B2, but then I'm going to play queen E4. Knight, F, knight over here. Also, this is hanging, and knight C6 is on the way. Knight B3. Knight goes to C6, hitting the queen and the bishop. The queen goes to protect the bishop, but now queen takes pawn. Now the queen is hitting the rook and the knight and the pawn, even though the knight can take the rook. Rook B6. He grabs the bishop with check. Rook A7. Magnus has cashed out of his investment, and let me tell you something right now. He's got interest. Not only does he have interest, he's pissed, like in a mafia movie. Queen to e6, he trades. What does he trade into? How much have you been watching of this video? He trades into an endgame. He trades into an endgame. h4, you ain't kicking out my bishop. h5, controlling the black structure. Let's trade. You want to trade? No problem. Here comes my rook. We're going to an endgame, Jan. Let's finish this the way we started this together. Rook e6, bishop back to e3. He's going to grab that pawn. He's going to grab that pawn. He's going to grab one of the pawns. There it is, rook h6, and Jan is only one pawn down. But let me tell you something right now. These two pawns are playing touch butt in the park. They are running straight into one another. There is absolutely nothing here. The shoes are tied together. King f6, knight d4. It's just a matter of time. Rooks are offered for an exchange, and Magnus has two pawns running down on opposite sides of the board. You're not stopping them. You're not stopping them. Rook c1. Rook c6. And I got news for you. It's not even the fact. The pawns are going to go. Black's king is mated. Magnus ends this game by sliding the king up to g3. Removing the oxygen tank from the black king. Black is mated. Black has all these pieces on the board. Magnus weaves a checkmate net in the middle of a game and defeats Yan Yiponishi to go six out of six. But, so what? So what if he's six out of six? He still has to win three more games. Now, spoiler alert, you know that happens, but how does that happen? How do you just beat everyone you play at the 2700 level? Alireza Firuja plays the fantasy Karo Khan. This man Magnus plays a move I've never seen in my life. He plays queen to a5 check. And guess what? I'm gonna start playing this move. This man Magnus just played a move I have legitimately never seen in my life. Queen a5. I mean, what do you do if white just goes here? But Ali Reza plays c3, and Magnus strikes at the center with e5. You see, e5 straight away is not very accurate if white knows like 15 moves of theory, they can get a very small advantage. But then if you play queen a5, white is gonna go here. But if you start with queen a5 and then bishop d2, well then I can go here now two of your pawns are hanging. So queen a5 check, c3, now he strikes the center, b4 kicks the queen up, but the queen goes back and white is not even better anymore. What is queen a5 check? How does this man know these ridiculous jutsus? Chops the center and just develops. Drops the queen back to c7. Here comes Ali Reza though. Grabs the bishop, bishop c4. Ali Reza is like a freight train unchained, all right? He doesn't need any invitation to start rolling downhill. Magnus Castle's opposite sides. That is an indication of hostility. That is a declaration of war on Ali Reza Firuja's king. The kings are on opposite sides. One of these two kings will fall. Bishop takes e6. The bishop drops back. Magnus wins the pawn on e4, but I got news for you. If I have to make a wager of who I think is going to win this game, it's probably the man with the armada completely centralized and not the man whose pieces have yet to participate in the game. So what does Firuja try to do? Trade some pieces because that is going to be the only way to prevent Magnus Carlsen from attacking you. But you know what's the best way to prevent Magnus Carlsen from attacking you? To avoid a game against Magnus Carlsen. Because the state that this man was in today, he would have defeated God himself. Bishop to f4, queen e6. It looks 
like the worst is over and Feruja might have avoided disaster, at the very least, it will cost him one pawn. Unfortunately, that's all Magnus needs. A6. Ali Reza, though, not going to go down without a fight. Puts his king on the edge of the board. King is safe on A7. Ali Reza plays G4. H5. Actually, Magnus misses an even faster win with queen to E3. But H5 is nice. Queen D3 check. Feruja keeps fighting. Feruja keeps fighting. I don't know how there's no mate here, so Magnus sends this to an endgame. Uh, you know, he always wins the men games. He had, he had a little bit of a faster win, I think, but this is going to get the job done. Too many pawns. Too many pawns. It's just a matter of time. And uh, b3, king b4. And on move 56 of this game, Magnus defeated his young rival and moved to 7 0. Now, Magnus could have probably end this, ended this game with just an absolute KO. Like, it could have been a brutal knockout of Ferruja's king, uh, but somehow he got tangled in all of these checks, but it doesn't matter because he always has an escape route to the phase of the game that he knows better than any human being on the planet. Imagine having an advantage against any human on the planet at something. Crazy, right? For me, it would probably be the amount of times I get diarrhea in a month. No, definitely not. I'm probably like a 50th percentile there. Um, my friends, two more games. You ready? These two are very fun. 7-0. and It's an Aljochen's defense against Richard Rapport. It's a solid game. Symmetrical structure-ish. D and E pawns. Just you know, very good. There, there's the symmetry. And Magnus hit, takes you know, Bishop H2. And very quickly, actually... They get into a more or less kind of endgame. G3 traps the bishop. But bishop e3. And report actually takes on g3. Magnus in this position could have played king to f1. But then queen c4. And then rook e1. And I'm actually not so certain you can win this very easily with white. So he went here. But report grabbed the g3 pawn. And escaped. And Magnus played bishop takes a7. Very balanced game. Rook a8. Rook e1. Bishop is hanging. Bishop is hanging. And here's something insane happened. Court played bishop c3. His idea was that Magnus will take, and he's going to take the bishop. Magnus went rook e7. And suddenly is threatening mate in two. And he's also threatening the bishop. Report plays d4. But now this, and Magnus, is winning. He's up a queen for a rook, but Report sneaks the pawn down to d2. There was no need for Magnus to engage with this. He could have played queen d7, actually, and fought back on the d-file. But instead of that, all of a sudden, Magnus again goes for a queen endgame. But with 40 seconds versus 5, it ain't it. Report is actually going to hold, because even though Magnus has a pawn up, his king is super weak, so what does he do? He chucks the pawns. He loses the pawns on this side of the board, and now Report is queening two, and they both have less than 10 seconds. Oh my god, it's a circus. Queen e2 check, queen f3 check. Here comes g5. Queen f3 check was an inaccuracy. Report here needed to play f3. It's a, it's a race. What do you do in a race? You gotta run, right? But instead, he starts giving checks, and all of a sudden, Magnus sneaks out, and the pawn gets to a7, and now the black queen has to stay back, and Magnus runs his king safely, blocking Report's pawn. His pawn is too fast, and Report gets frozen in his tracks as Magnus just advances, and there is nothing Report can do. Queen f3, if you take, it's mate. If you take, I'll promote. And Report resigned. Magnus is just more accurate for a longer period of time. He might slip up, he might give up some advantage. 8 and 0. Oh. He wins again. This might have been his most impressive win of the whole day. Magnus is playing Konstantin Lupulescu, who's a Romanian grandmaster. Uh, and uh, I believe a wild card uh, for this event. And... I'm trying to remember where the wild card invitation came from. Um, he might have done extremely well at like a previous event. I don't actually remember. 
Because, of course, Lupulescu is lower rated than the field, but they always have some wild cards. And they always allow a grandmaster who is not yet at, like, not at that high of a level as, as the players involved still, uh, still compete. And, ugh! Here we go, my friends. Here we go. Power through Gotham. Magnus almost didn't get anywhere close in this game. It was an exchange. Queen's Gambit declined. Magnus traded light, light scored bishops. They both castled. This is the most boring position he's had in the entire video. He's got to win this game. And this is like the weakest opponent that he had all day. And it's a 2600 level GM. And the thing is, of all the opponents that Magnus played that day, this was the one you expected him to beat. This is his lowest rated opponent. They are nearly 250 points apart. In fact, they are 250 points apart in Blitz. It's going to be a walk in the park, right? Queen C2. Magnus plays rook e8, knight d7, and immediately fires with b5. Because he's trying to assert dominance. That's what he's trying to do. He plays b4. Knight goes out to a4. And in this position, Magnus actually has a knockout. He can go here. Which simply ends the game. Uh, eh, ends the game as a strong... If white plays the perfect response, he will get a worse position. If he plays a bad response, he might just straight up lose the game. For example, if you take the knight, this is lost for white. It's like not close. Your pawns are awful. You're going to lose this. Pressure here. This, this doesn't justify how bad it is. Uh, but if you uh, take here first, then I'm going to go here, which is a triple fork. You take my queen. I take your queen. Your bishop is hanging. So let's say you like move it. Then I'm going to come back and fork you. So you can't do that. So you got to go here. Then I'm still going to come back and I'm going to take the bishop and I'm going to be better. Magnus plays c5, and all of a sudden, after this, 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 this is a draw. Magnus can't win this. Queens, knights, rooks, rook e2. Knight c3, discovered attack on the queen. Knight d5. You can't win this. It's not winnable. It's two rooks and four. Two rooks and four, knight and bishop. Right? Like, can't win this position. It's complete this is a dead draw. White is just going to defend over here. He's going to lose this pawn, but it's, it's not. You can't win this. <laughs> you can't win this, huh? You absolute bozos. You know he won. How did he make it look so easy? Well, white has to apparently go here. You got to let the person chase you. Now, you may be wondering, isn't g2 hanging? Yes, but then rook g1, and if this happens, this is actually far more drawable because these two cancel out, and this is not a three on two. This is touch butt in the park. No, that's not what that is. Rook to g1 instead, and this is too passive. This is too passive, and then this rook is not playing defense in the right way, and Magnus anchors that side of the board and just methodically slowly expands white has less than 10 seconds he's panicking and magnus advances all his pawns for the fifth or sixth time in this video wins an end game slides over one square these two pieces are paralyzed a2 rook b1 unstoppable this man goes nine out of nine not only did he go nine out of nine he also clapped when the game ended like there was another game going on and magnus shook hands with his opponent, turned to the crowd and just went like, come on! Like, he didn't yell because that would have been hilarious, but he was like, like, that, that's, that's cool to see, man. Like, that's cool. The fact that the, I want to say the world champ, he's not the world champ. He's the world champ in Rabbit and Blitz. So it's cool that he's defending. Uh, that's cool. Magnus played nine opponents today. He beat all nine opponents. That has never happened in chess, ever. Um, this is, uh, Bobby Fischer once famously won some ridiculous amount of games in a row. But the level of the players now is higher, and to beat nine different players in a day has, I think, never happened in chess, ever. So. He fell off, huh? He should retire, huh? I think reports of his death were greatly exaggerated. You know what's not greatly exaggerated? My jet lag. I'm going to go now. Goodbye. See you in the next video. And thank you to the kidnappers uh, for setting me free, finally. Um, on a serious note, uh, if you made it this far in the video, just a heartfelt message from me um, uh, while traveling. 
I encountered so many cool people. I went to Sicily, Rome, and Paris. Uh, locals, tourists, just chess fans. Super, super cool. Uh, I'm not saying this to tell you people recognize me and I'm famous. People recognize me and I'm famous. But that's not the point. The point that I'm trying to say is, I, like, I'm living a dream. I would have never thought that four years ago being like a teacher of like an after school program in New York City and some private students that anything like this could be possible. I have people of all ages, nationalities, backgrounds, locations in the world coming up to me even while traveling. And I just want to say thank you. So thanks for playing chess. Thanks for watching me, whether it's a lot or a little. And um, yeah, thank you. And congrats to Magnus. Hold, this dude is crazy. <laughs> Hopefully he does this again tomorrow and I make another one. Now get out of here.